Hi, YouTubers. This is Arnold Soloff. Uh, let me move this over here so I can get in. Uh, today we're doing a review of these seed starter trays. You have the MIXC 1020 seed starter trays. It's BPA free. Uh, so this is an initial unboxing and impressions. Uh, when I got these in, they uh, were crushed in over here. Uh, it doesn't seem to have cracked the plastic, but here are a couple of photos showing how they were pushed in on the corners when they arrived deformed it slightly i was able to push it back out and it popped back out so slightly deformed let me see if i can i don't think it's enough to make it worthwhile to return it uh we'll see if it's functionally okay now each of these lids for the trays contains four vents, two on top and one on each side. And they give you these vent covers, which uh, have like a little knob or elevated ridges so that you can turn them. And then this central hub, which inserts into a hole in the plastic. So let's see how easy it is to install them. And that just pop right in and then you just turn it to open or close the vents so let's pop the rest of them in we'll, we'll set up one tray we don't need to set up two the set the kit comes as a set of two trays and uh, pop that in pop this in so, if this other one pops in, then I think the crushing of the plastic really won't have any functional negative impact. Now, they all, all four of them popped in fine. So, yeah, so you can, you have a lot of control over how much ventilation goes in your little lid cover which makes a little mini greenhouse um all right so let's get one of these out of the way for now tray one all right so let's just focus in on this one so uh the bottom of the tray you can see it contoured so it's elevated about I would say quarter inch, uh, these little curved inlet square things or whatever, almost like a stop sign, hex, uh, octagonal, octagonal um, uh, shape thing um, with uh, depressions in between so that uh, each of these trays has a hole each compartment has a hole in the bottom drainage hole so that the tray keeps this tray elevated and so any water that you pour in there can drain into the bottom of the uh, green tray the green tray has no holes in it so um, Let's line this up. And three, four. All right. So each tray is one, two, three, one, two, three, four. That's 12 in each of these trays. 
And there are one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's 72 in one tray like that. And so with two units, that's 144 seedlings that you can, uh, or plants that you can uh, grow at once. Uh, assuming you do one per compartment. Uh, you also get this little, says here, don't forget to claim your free gift, a seedling heat mat. And you have this QR code thing here, and I'll check that out later. Uh, see if I can get a, <laughs> a free heating mat for this. I don't know that I need one. For where I'm growing it, but uh, what the hell. You also get these nifty little tools, little scoop thing here, and I guess this is for, I'm guessing, uh, extracting plants from the compartments. A little spatula, one side with a smooth, other side with a serrated edge. And then this little cone thing, which I'm guessing is for punching holes in whatever media you're using, such as uh, uh, rock wool or whatever, to, it's a hole in order to insert your seeds. And then they give you the typical... Um, Things which I guess you could write on with a, a wax pencil. So you can stick one in there to say what it is you've planted. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to put this on pause for a minute because one of the questions I asked, I never got an answer to it, was uh, what size uh, rock wool cubes fit in here? So... I ordered two sizes, one, one inch and one and a half, and we'll see. So let me pause the video. Okay, so I have the rock wool. I checked to see how the one and a half inch and the one inch uh, lined up with the compartments. Uh, in the trays, and neither of them lined up correctly. Now, I believe that they sell. I recall seeing uh, rock wool, which was designed to mate with 1020 trays. I guess that's the standard size for, uh, or a certain standard used for seed planting trade, trays. Uh, so, I cut out one of each, the small one, one inch, the large one, one and a half inch. Um, and uh, so you can see the one inch goes in fine, but it, it's small and it drops down to the bottom, which I don't think is a problem. Uh, so if you had a small plant or seedling and you wanted to use that, you know, it would just drop down in there. My guess is it may swell up a bit after it gets wet anyway. And uh, the one and a half inch one uh, goes in fine, but has a kind of a lip on the top, which stops it. But since this stuff's compressible, you can push it down and probably make it go down to the bottom if you wanted. But I think what would make more sense is, especially if you decide you want to do a hydroponics type method, would be to, uh, and that would be like a crack, cracky method where you're going to um, uh, just put your either plain water or your uh, fertilized solution in the bottom of the tray to maybe... Uh, a level that would go and maybe just touch the bottom of the rock wool so that the roots would just about touch the water, the rest of the plant out of the water. And then the wicking action should keep this moist. And uh, 
and then you should be good until your seedlings are ready to be transplanted. I guess depending on how you want to do it. Uh, if you're just going to take the seedlings out and stick them somewhere else afterwards, then I, I guess it's uh, less important. Uh, but yeah, they both fit. This one's snugger. And neither of these match the 1020 configuration. If you get one that does, you should be able to just put the whole thing in there as one mat. And uh, that would be, I guess, ideal. Um, but it's not going to work on this one. I guess another way to do it would be to take the trays out. Uh, put a certain level, like maybe a quarter inch or half inch of solution in the tray. <laughs> and then just put the whole sheet of rock wool in there. And stick a seed in each hole. And uh, do it that way. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll try out the different ways and see which works the best. So I hope you found this uh, useful in case you were considering getting one of these oh and by the way um the lid as i understand it does not snap in it just rests on the surface here now it does have a lip here which curves around and mates with the tray itself so it's kind of i mean it's not airtight you don't want it totally airtight but it does just rest on the top. So if you're going to put these outdoors, you're going to have a problem with the winds blowing the lids off. But you could solve that by putting a little piece of tape here or a rubber band around it or whatever uh, so that the lid doesn't blow away. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. So here's a short clip just showing how the trays look in my little setup here. So I've got my LED lights running on underneath the top shelf, shining down into the trays. Same thing here. And then my own little homemade arrangement out of some food containers that I used to start some seedlings here. So here's a quick follow-up to um, the trays. I've started playing around with them. In the top tray, I've got some zinnia growing there. Uh, that's in miracle Grow potting soil in larger trays that I got from a um, garden supply center. This is my little hydroponics dish made out of a deli container. And this over here are the trays that came with the unit. With the lid off, you can see it a little better. These, these seeds germinated in two days. Amazing. Uh, this is my little cracky hydroponics setup <laughs> made out of a deli cup. Let's see if that works. Uh, and then I just got three zinnias in the smaller cells. My understanding from doing some more YouTube research is simply if you have smaller cells, you just can't leave them in there as long. They have to be transplanted sooner. So a bigger cell, you know, you can leave it in the cell longer prior to transplant. And then down here, I have just some rock wool cubes that have some um, marigold seeds in them. Uh, they were soaked and again, just monkeying around and seeing what's what those seeds are just beginning to germinate after i'd say about five days and then down here it's a little food container like something you get from a chinese restaurant um, this is the dish that i 
germinated my zinnia seeds in and then transplanted them up to the cells above and um, down here I've got some pinks which are just beginning to germinate and uh, again just monkeying around right now I <laughs> I'm learning I don't you know this is not like I'm one of these people that's been doing this for years and I've got a system going I just bought these two seeding kits and said okay let me play <laughs> and uh, we'll see what happens oh and I did get some mason jars because I want to try uh, growing some lettuce there as well so this will be for cracky method wide mouth mason jars 32 ounces and I'll put a three uh, inch net cup on the top and uh, block the light out of them and I should be able to grow vegetables like lettuce in there. Well, we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching.